Hey, what's up folks? It's Jesse with Keeping It Real Finance, the channel that always has your back and tells it like it is. Well, today's video is going to be all about the Jasmine blockchain and the Jasmine wallet. So I've found the longer that I'm into Jasmine and the more research that I do, that sometimes the questions of today have actually been answered in the past. What's really hard though is finding that information and putting it together today, right? So that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. I'm gonna answer those questions on how this blockchain works, why this partnership with centrality is absolutely essential. I'm also gonna be answering questions all around the wallet and why the wallet is essential. So hopefully by the end of this video and the end of the final thoughts, you'll have some good takeaways for exactly how Jasmine works and how their partnership with centrality benefits Jasmine in particular. So it should be a very good video for anybody out there who's investing in Jasmine, looking at Jasmine, or has Jasmine on their radar, all right? So if you enjoyed today's video, absolutely make sure to hit the like button. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you click the bell, you'll be made aware whenever I post time-sensitive content. And now let's get it going. So I want to kick off today's video by first talking about the Jasmine blockchain. So we have to start all the way back at the beginning, which essentially was right about 2018. And right here in this particular post from the PR Times, this is a press release where they announced a partnership with Jasmine and Centrality. So per the press release, Jasmine Co. Limited has formed a strategic alliance with blockchain development venture Centrality Limited, and by fusing Jasmine's IoT technology and original ideas with Centrality's advanced blockchain technology, we will create a large-scale autonomous IoT network. We aim to spread, in addition, the first jointly developed application, the proof of concept application, Secure Knowledge Communicator. And it goes on to say that, uh, which will be an unveiled for the first time um, in the world at the Japan Blockchain Conference, uh, June 26 and 27th. This was the year 2018. So just a little over four years ago was when this partnership was announced. Okay. So this partnership is at the center of the Jasmine blockchain. There is no Jasmine blockchain without the centrality partnership. And if you want to look up Centrality yourself, you're more than welcome to. Their website is centrality.ai. They are a New Zealand-based company. Now, where this gets interesting, I wanted to expand a little further here, is if we cruise on over to LinkedIn, this is the LinkedIn profile, which I have shared before, of Sheng Guo. So if we look at Sheng Guo's background, so he is an architect, senior software developer, and within his background, now keep in mind that that post announcing the partnership was from July of 2018. We'll look down here who is an architect slash senior Python developer at centrality.ai from July 2018 to April 2019. Shang Guo, okay? And he says here, IoT logistics, blockchain distributed ledger technology. Now, why that matters is if we then cruise on over to the official Jasmine page. Uh, since that time, obviously we had um, Masanobu Yoshida uh, step down and go to be the CEO of Dreamforest. He is also a professor, which I posted about just the other day at his uh, alma mater, so that's really cool. Uh, but who ended up uh, taking his place as the uh, chief information officer is Sheng Guo. So here he is again, okay? So we have a direct tie to Centrality and that Centrality partnership announced in 2018, which is basically the whole catalyst for the Jasmine blockchain, okay? So a lot of people don't really understand the Jasmine blockchain because they say, well, isn't Jasmine on Ethereum? Yes, the answer is yes. Jasmine is an ERC-20 token meaning the smart contract for Jasmine and for all of the coins that are in supply is on Ethereum, okay? So let me expand a little bit. So moving on forward here to Centrality, here's a picture of the actual team of Centrality for some awareness, and I'm gonna show a little bit more about this in a bit. 
Uh, but as I said, they are New Zealand based. And I want to say this guy right here in the background, I think that's Aaron McDonald. He is the uh, the CEO here. And this is kind of funny. You know, you can tell they've, they've got a sense of humor because when you hover over his picture, then it's like somebody drew on it, right? Uh, you know, Roger Smith here's got a little, little crown. Uh, Jerry's got a mustache. Let's see here. This guy's got an earring and a mohawk. So pretty funny. Um, but that is the centrality team right there. Okay. So moving on forward. So I wanted to show, um, here is a glimpse of our research discord essentially. And specifically what I'm showing you is centrality related posts. This is a centrality thread. Okay. So the first thing that I really want to highlight here, and this ties back into the actual blockchain and how it works is making sense of level two, okay? So I wanna show you this article. So this article here, this is on the SensNet. This is basically Centrality's SensNet Medium page. Um, so if you, can, if you can see up here in the top, it's medium.com forward slash Centrality and then forward slash the title of the article, right? So what is a layer two solution? So here we go. So first of all, they wanna ask, what is layer one blockchain? Well, and, and to put it simply, a layer one blockchain is basically like Bitcoin, okay? So it says here, a layer one blockchain or L1 is a traditional blockchain network. Uh, by that, I mean a chain which provides the full infrastructure re required to run an independent decentralized ledger. Layer one blockchains can validate and finalize transactions without the need for another network. Examples of major names include Bitcoin and Ethereum, which is what JASME, the contract is on. It's on Ethereum, okay? So that's a layer one blockchain. So the problem with layer one blockchains, and this has come about in recent years, is scalability, okay? Layer one blockchains have a really hard time scaling. Um, they cannot, what I mean by scalability is as more users use the blockchain and more transactions are made, uh, they back up right? Then those gas fees also go way up along with it. So it says here, scalability, the major challenge with layer one. So that's 100% true. Um, blockchains are always fighting to balance the big three functions, decentralization, security, and scalability. And so the, the big thing that a layer one blockchain gives you is security. Okay. That's, that's kind of the big thing here. Okay. Uh, but where it falls short then is on the scalability, okay? So they say here, the pattern goes like this. Uh, number one, blockchain gets popular, more computers on the network and more transactions to process. So it says security gets better. More computers are great for security as there are more copies of the ledger in place. So the network is more decentralized, right? So this goes back to those core tenants they just mentioned. But it says speed gets worse. More computers do not increase the transaction processing speed while more transactions mean network congestion, okay? So that says low speed and high network demand equal gas wars. And this is exactly what happened with Ethereum in the last bull run over, you know, the last couple of years. So the gas fees were completely out of control. Everybody at Ethereum knows they're out of control, but how exactly do they fix it? So I kind of view uh, Ethereum like this, and I think this is the easiest way to view it. Ethereum was created in roughly 2016. So think about Ethereum being, let's say, a car, and it's a car that's built in 2016. Well, here we are in 2022, and we realize that there's some shortcomings to that car that was made six years ago, okay? So today, we want to fix that car, and what are our options for fixing it? Well. We can either add on new aftermarket parts to try and get some gains here and there. You know, I can think of uh, when I was younger, I used to do this with sports cars, right? So I had numerous sports cars. And when I wanted to, uh, you know, soup it up, let's say, you can add something like a cold air intake to make the airflow better. It makes the car faster. You can add uh, a new exhaust system. You can add headers to it. You, you know, these straight pipes, all these, all these little things that you can do, essentially, that adds to the performance of the vehicle, but you still have that original vehicle that you're working with, okay? Now, something that Ethereum is trying to do today 
is they're trying to switch the entire network from proof of work to proof of stake, which is a monumental task considering how many projects are on Ethereum. So uh, that that's not easy. I would equate that going back to the car analogy to say you have a car from 2016 and let's say let's say it's a Chevy or something like that. Today you want to take the engine from a Tesla and put it in that car. So you're completely changing everything in terms of the guts of this vehicle and then you want it to run without any problems. That's that's the equivalent of what they're trying to do with Ethereum today and that's why it's such a tall order with Ethereum, okay? So, going back to centrality and Jasmine. So, why the partnership? Why is this partnership needed? Well, the partnership is simply needed because if Jasmine was only on Ethereum, then they run into the transaction problem. We cannot get enough transactions through on the blockchain. It doesn't work for the model that Jasmine has um, for using the Jasmine coin as utility uh, for all the transactions that would take place with the IoT, okay, with the personal data locker, et cetera. Okay. So they had to have a strategic partnership and they made that partnership with centrality. Now, w did they have knowledge of Shanguo before uh, all of this? I'm not really sure. Uh, th that hasn't been spelled out anywhere, but obviously he is a direct tie to the centrality team. And now he works at Jasmi as of, I want to say, I think on the website it says as of 2020 that he's been with Jasmi. So the last couple of years. Okay. So going back to this article, so what does this do, right? So it says making blockchain faster, the transaction ordering machine, okay? So a simple way to see a blockchain is to consider it as a transaction ordering machine. Transactions arrive at the network at any time from anyone and in any order. So the blockchain's job is to solve the double spend problem so this, this is all, this is the whole math problem that the layer one blockchains are solving, the double spend problem. And all that they're talking about is that if Jesse takes his Bitcoin and sends it to Bob, well, I can't send that same Bitcoin over to Jane because I already sent it to Bob. That's what they're verifying, okay? Now it gets more and more complex because as time goes on, the blockchain gets longer and longer and longer, okay? So it says here, um, essentially, we want to make sure that no one is spending money they don't have. So they do this by organizing the transaction requests in a single valid order. So in a lot of ways, a blockchain works like a transaction ordering funnel. So here's a really good image. So it says unordered transactions. So they kind of show up as, let's say, Lego blocks. Uh, the consensus protocol is a funnel. And then we put them in order, right? That's all that we're doing, okay? Now, as we go down further here, so it says uh, in, in the layer one, uh, in layer one blockchains, excuse me, the funnel simply isn't big enough to process all of the transactions, okay? So they come in here and now they're piling up in the funnel, okay? So they're piling up, we're still putting them in order, but they're backing up here. That's when the gas war is created. So that's when your cost per transaction goes way, way up. So anybody who doesn't understand what a gas fee is, all it is is a transaction fee. And as the network becomes more congested, as more demand is in the network, the fee goes up is basically it because it's getting backed up. So then it says here, how to make the funnel bigger and go faster, right? Well, there's basically three options. So option number one is make the uh, layer one funnel bigger, which a lot of companies are still working on. Uh, option number two is to shrink the transactions. So um, it says, what if we didn't have to make the funnel bigger? We could just make the transactions smaller. Okay, so then we could fit more transactions through the existing funnel. Okay, that's an option. Um, an, option number three, uh, make more funnels. So this is an option that has actually become really popular throughout cryptocurrencies. So it says, layer two side chains offer a multi-chain future where the functions of an existing layer one are preserved and transactions can be run on another chain to increase processing speed. So this is it, right? So this is exactly what Polygon does. So Polygon Matic, for anybody out there who doesn't know it, Polygon Matic, this is exactly what they do. They are a 
third party scaling solution side chain to Ethereum. That's it. It's all they are. So all they all they're doing is they're making Ethereum more efficient. They're like, like I said, they're kind of that um, going back to our car analogy. They would be like if you took your stock car from 2016 and then you decided, hey, I'm going to put a supercharger on the engine. I'm going to soup up the engine with this really good part. That's basically what Polygon is. Okay, it is a layer two sidechain scaling solution. Centrality is a layer two sidechain scaling solution. That's exactly what it is. And you can see now why it makes sense that Jasmine had to have it, okay? So it says here, the future lies in layer two sidechains um, in particular. So what is it? Basically layer twos are third party integrations that can be used in conjunction with a layer one blockchain. So in this system, layer ones are used as a base network and layer two links to the base network and operates as a side chain, processing the transactions for the layer one and providing additional features. So it says this creates a faster and more dynamic decentralized system overall. Now it says the link between a layer one and layer two is usually built using a bridge protocol, which allows tokens and events to move between chains. So layer two side chain solutions create the best of both worlds. On the one hand, the superior security of layer one, the decentralization and the liquidity, right? Uh, combined with the faster speeds, low gas fees, and unique features offered by a side chain. That's it. That, that's this whole thing in a nutshell. This is how the Jasmi blockchain works. It is a partnership with Jasmi and with Centrality, which is a layer two scaling solution. That's it. That's the Jasmi blockchain. Okay. <laughs> so it's really not that hard when you kind of break it down like this to understand how this whole thing uh, comes about. Now, with centrality, they refer to this as SensNet, C E N N Z net. Uh, it's both a layer one and layer two sidechain. And it says we run our own blockchain as well as provide an optimized sidechain solution for Ethereum users. So they're targeting Ethereum in particular. So they mentioned the Ethereum bridge here. Uh, Ethereum virtual machine compatibility. Um, if you ever see EVM, that's what that stands for, the Ethereum virtual machine. This was the technology invented by Dr. Gavin Wood of Polkadot in particular, okay? So anyhow, uh, that is the blockchain, all right? Um, now, let me move forward here. Here is an actual picture that I was able to track down. I wanna say this picture was taken somewhere around 2019 or 2020, and it says Jasmine Net. This is the Jasmine blockchain, okay? So it says recent blocks, it's got all the different block numbers, and I actually tried to go to this address and I couldn't get there, so I'm, I'm, I imagine there's some sort of a security um, way to get into this. Uh, you know, obviously you would have to log in, and I did, didn't do that. I just tried to type it out and see if I could get there. Couldn't do it. <laughs> but I know that this is the exact blockchain and this is what it looks like. So this is Jasmine Net, okay? Now, in terms of um, Sens Net, so this is Centrality, yet again, it's just a different name for the product. So it says, harness the power of the Sens Net blockchain, so Centrality. So it says here, affordable gas prices forever. So their layer two integration provides near free swap transactions now and forever, swap to your heart's content for a fraction of a cent, okay? Nice little rhyme there. Uh, breakneck speeds, at 1,000 transactions per second, we keep the party running at full speed. Now, the funny thing with that, 1,000 TPS is actually really, today, in perspective, not as impressive as it used to be, okay? Um, in particular, there is uh, one of the projects that's in my top three, the Kadena blockchain, uh, KDA. Uh, does 480,000 transactions a second, and it does it with these this multi-chain ar architecture with these side chains, right? Uh, but in particular here, with centrality, it is 1,000 transactions per second. Now that, um, as of right now, is more than enough uh, for Jasmine because Jasmine does not have active users yet, but that should be coming very soon 
um, when the Sagan Tosu uh, pre-registration uh, ends at the beginning of September. So we're only a couple of weeks away from that, as well as, you know, we got numerous other things kind of around the corner with the fourth quarter in 2023. All right. So most of these other little things here I've talked about. So now I want to go back over to the um, to the Discord page, and I want to show you some different things that I found over the last couple of days here. And we'll end up talking about the wallet probably towards the end. So one of the things here, it says, um, this was taken from a, a centrality medium page. And it says that we're excited to see various projects and partnerships underway, including Silo, Jasmine, and Centrality Ventures, okay? So what specifically about Jasmine? And they say down here that um, Jasmine has always been part of the plug network community and has always planned to launch its own plug-based blockchain that can be integrated with SensNet. So what is plug? Well, let me, let me show you here if I scroll down. Let's see, where is it? Uh, oh, before I get to that, let me show you a couple other things. <laughs> There's a lot here. Okay, so here is another uh, centrality AscendsNet Medium article with Aaron McDonald, the CEO. So they say, when and in what form will the cooperation and partnership with the Jasmine, well, excuse me, the Japanese project Jasmine take shape? Please tell us about the relationship between Sens and Jasmine. So he says, Jasmine is a partner and the technology we are building together is amazing. The Jasmine Net IoT platform uses plug technology and unique Jasmine decentralized applications are a great solution for corporate customers. The Jasmine team is very experienced and has deep relationships with large companies. That's 100% true. They are a very exciting project for 2020 and we're delighted to be working with them successfully. So this was from two years ago that they did this, okay? From that same article, Will the Jasmine token remain an ERC-20 token in the future, right? We've had that question asked. And he says, Jasmine would be the best person to answer that question. As, the, as their partner, we are committed to helping them succeed. So does Jasmine also use SensNet or do you use PlugNet? And he says, Jasmine is one of five companies using Plug. So some of them are nearing launch. We will announce it as soon as it goes live. So when I was showing you the stuff on SensNet, that's basically some highlights that will also be part of this PlugNet, which is what Jasmine is part of in terms of their blockchain, okay? So scrolling on down here, here was a picture that I wanted to share. So this picture in, in particular, it says, here's a photo of the Jasmine technical team from New Zealand uh, working with engineers. So that's pretty cool. Um, then we've got this post here. So how advanced is the partnership and cooperation with Jasmine Co. Limited? Please tell us uh, how they're involved now and in the future. And so they say, Jasmine's a core partner and we're very excited about the technology we are building together. Jasmine Net, which I just showed you that photo of, IoT platform uses plug technology and unique Jasmine apps are a great uh, solution for enterprise customers. Okay, I think I just read that. Maybe I'm reading that again. <laughs> Moving on. Please tell me about the relationship to, between Plug and Centrality. So this is interesting. So it says, Plug is a core part of our future and innovation house for core network protocols and technologies that we use to create existing projects like SensNet, Trackback, and JasmineNet.PlugNet. Uh, is also our interoperability layer so we can connect these great networks um, together, okay? So going back to that image in particular, so here it is. And if you notice up here, the, the web address was jasminet-ui, so user interface .tokyo.centralityapp.com, essentially is how, how they got into that, okay? So going back here to the Discord, um, let me see here. How does centrality ensure personal data security and prevent leakage? So this is just sort of a unique thing that I wanted to share, uh, where they say users are always in control of their data. SenseNet has a protocol called Donuts that allows developers to build deep permissions into their decentralized apps so they can clarify which data is shared 
with which party and for how long. This like screams Jasmine, right? And that goes on to say, Silo gives users control over how content is stored and shared and new APIs for uh, data preferences and meta metadata sharing are coming soon. So here we have an image. So as I noted here, I said a screenshot above um, taken from centrality post geared towards Vietnamese users. Oh yeah, that's why I highlighted that. I forgot about that. So I mentioned in my last article or my last um, video that I did last week uh, that we have been able to trace them, uh, Jasmine in particular to Vietnam. And so this specifically was referencing uh, Viet Vietnamese users. So that was really interesting. But here is what I wanted to show you, this image here. So this is one of Centrality's images. It says, everything you need to build a decentralized app. So they're basically just offering services. And you come along as the business and say, well, I want to pick and choose the following things. And that's what we'll work with, right? So you can see here, plug a toolkit for building blockchains. So that's what Jasmine is using to build the Jasmine blockchain. Something else that's in here, uh, Silo. So decentralized communication social fintech platform. Obviously, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> and then this one here in particular, Centropay. This is the future Jasmine wallet. So merchant marketplace for applications is the Centropay service that Centrality offers. Okay. And I'll explain that more in a minute. Um, I did want to share this. I've shared this photo before, but here's a photo of the Centrality team and the Jasmine team. So obviously this is a little bit older photo because uh, Masanobu Yoshida is right here on the right. Uh, he's the one that's with Dreamforest and the university now. In the middle, we obviously have Kunitaki Ando, and then here is Katsumasa Sato, right? And right now, right between them is Aaron McDonald from um, Centrality. So there's that. Uh, now, I was also able to find the original partnership announcement, which is um, also in their uh, Medium page for Centrality, if you want to find that. Um, I can possibly post the link or, you know, just reach out to me and I can, I can post that. So anyways, so I noted that it says Jasmine will use digital wallet service Centropay. Okay. Um, let me see what I noted here. Jasmine Deputy President Masanobu Yoshida said centrality shares our vision of decentralization, making it an important partner for us. We are pleased to be collaborating with Centrality to deliver an IoT solution with unmatched data security for, and I also talked about this in my last video, Japanese customers. So remember, Japanese or Jasmine is a Japanese first company. Okay. I talked about it in last week's video that it'd be a heck of a lot easier for them to start this company somewhere like Singapore. They are not doing that. They are doing it in Japan. This is Japan based. There is a huge Japan angle to this. Okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to share here is this image that Zippy found for me. And I'm not 100% where this came from. Uh, I combed through the white papers, didn't see it there. So I'm not sure exactly where it came from. An image somewhere posted by the team. But essentially, it says reference decentralized application secure knowledge communicator. Uh, reference uh, decentralized application smart guardian and that says jasmine platform interface and white label api so it says skc core services smart guardian core service and here are the services remember that centrality offers silo right this single source central pay okay data lake etc so all of these things basically all tie back to centrality in particular, right? Now, the way that this works for anybody who doesn't understand the wallet aspect of it, okay? So the wallet basically serves as a user interface, okay? Right now, when people are using Jasmine or the PDL, they are filling out a manual form through the website, okay? Um, if they were holding their Jasmine, how do they then... Um, Put their Jasmine in to then, uh, you know, use this system, right? How, how do you how do you move your Jasmine there? How do you stake your Jasmine? How do you participate in governance for Jasmine? 
Well, the way you do it is by having a wallet, an easy to use wallet that is a user interface. So any user, me, you, whoever, uh, we go into somewhere like our app store on our cell phone, we download the wallet. Uh, this is no different than numerous other cryptocurrency projects. They all have a wallet basically. And within that wallet, you could send your Jasmine to it. As I mentioned, you could potentially stake your Jasmine earning rewards, which they have previously discussed. Um, you could participate in those governance proposals. All of the information that I'm talking about was in the Binance Academy article on Jasmine. They also did a video on it, okay? So they uh, specifically mentioned a wallet. I have seen the wallet only mentioned maybe one other time. I want to say it was either in the PR Times or Nikkei Asia where they mentioned the wallet. But the wallet is an absolutely critical function of the project. You have to have a wallet. And so the reason I wanted to talk about the wallet today was in order for them to release DD coin in the fourth quarter, remember the user uh, basically will be rewarded with DD coin. There has to be a wallet. This ha this is a, um, a must have. It has to happen. Okay. <laughs> so the wallet, I think, is probably right around the corner. Now, we haven't seen the actual wallet anywhere. Uh, really, the only thing that we've seen, um, you know, that are, are maybe kind of in-house images, images with like an app is kind of like the various uh, dynamic NFT images for the fan token for Sagan Tosu that you can find on their website, uh, the, J the Japan website in particular, you can find it there, okay? So the wallet is an essential function and there are many uses for it. Um, now with DD Coin in particular, DD Coin does nothing to take away from Jasmine, not, not, not whatsoever. Um, just like just about every major blockchain has its own wallet, just about every major blockchain has its own stable coin. There are numerous use cases for why you sometimes need a stable method of, tr of transacting. And so DD coin is a key function here to the wallet. And Jasmine, in a way, is really just falling in line with all of the other uh, cryptocurrencies that set this path before them. They are, they're following a similar path. However, where they are different is that they are an IoT network. And where they are specifically different technology-wise is with the personal data locker. No one else has that. They're also different with Secure Knowledge Communicator and Smart Guardian. No one else has that, nobody. So that sets Jasmine apart. The other thing that sets Jasmine apart is the government. The government of Japan is behind Web3, IoT, um, Society 5.0, all of these things. The government is behind this, but Changes still need to happen at the government level. Um, it, currently, right now, the tax rate is too high. They can be taxed on unrealized gains. All of those things are still in play. But there is legislation in the pipeline to address all of this and significantly lower it and change this. Um, that's looking like a 2023 date. Uh, where the government is also involved is within, in particular, smart cities. And guess what's part of a smart city? Well, the Hokkaido ballpark that Jasmi is a part of, okay, in partnership. So Jasmi is tied into um, the government of Japan in particular. They are very closely tied. And as I mentioned in my prior video, Kunitake Ando in particular um, has talked about how there is no tier one a GAFA type of company at Japan the way he sees it, right? So he doesn't even see Sony at the level of GAFA. So GAFA has sort of, in a way, you could argue maybe gone above Sony. But, you know, then again, I mean, you could kind of argue maybe that Sony's come back a little bit because uh, Sony is all over the place. They still have PlayStation, which, which is doing absolutely great. Um, even the recent Brad Pitt movie, Bullet Train, uh, was a Sony Pictures film, which, by the way, I saw and it was excellent. So if anybody likes that style of movie, uh, it was it was a really good movie. So anyways. That's that's where this leaves us. So to recap here, we've got the Jasmine blockchain and the Jasmine wallet, uh, both essentially created through partnership with Centrality, okay? So I'm gonna wrap up this whole video now with some final thoughts, bring it on home, and uh, 
hopefully this makes sense for anybody out there who didn't really understand this before you watch this video. All right, so for some final thoughts today, I hope you saw by the in-depth research that I did earlier why the partnership with Centrality uh, means so much to the Jasmine project. Basically, there is no Jasmine blockchain without Centrality. There is no Jasmine wallet without Centrality. So Centrality and their role that they play as a partner is absolutely critical in moving Jasmine the project forward. So if you look back at the corporate backgrounds, the Sony backgrounds of the team here with Jasmine, what they did not have was blockchain backgrounds. They didn't have that. So really they needed to source that from somewhere else. Now what's really interesting is the wrinkle with Shang Guo, who was on the Centrality team, who is now on the Jasmine team. So he was on the Centrality team in 2018 through 2019. 2020, he started with the Jasmine team in particular after the exit of Masanobu Yoshida, okay? So that's kind of an interesting little wrinkle here. Now, in terms of the wallet, I have not seen any kind of imagery or anything around it yet but I know it has to be on the horizon because not only was it mentioned in the Binance Academy article, but they really can't do what they wanna do with DD Coin if there's no wallet. And like I said, this isn't a new or unique thing for Jasmine to need a wallet. All of the major blockchains have a wallet, okay? So this is just yet another function. All of the major blockchains have stable coins, yet another function. They're really just kind of falling in line. But where they differ, as I mentioned earlier, is on the technology, it's on the government implications, and it's on the corporate backgrounds in particular, okay? So that's where Jasmine definitely has an edge here. So Jasmine is a really, really neat project. And you know we've talked about it before on my channel as well as other places that sometimes it's really hard to keep up with it with just the language barrier, translation isn't correct, uh, Brian had mentioned over this past week the kanji characters and names. If you don't have those right, you won't be able to research and find the correct research. Uh, there's numerous little issues here, on top of which news has come out, but sometimes it's three or four years old, and you really have to dig to find it and sort of connect all of these dots, which is what our team does on a regular basis where we do lots and lots of research. So. That being said, hopefully I've been able to answer your questions that you have. If there's anything further that you've got questions about, by all means, leave it in the comments. Uh, tag me on a Twitter post and I'd be happy to respond if you got a question regarding the Jasmine blockchain or the Jasmine wallet. Me in particular, I am not paid by Jasmine. None of us are. I am simply just a guy who invests in Jasmine and I think it's one of the best cryptocurrency projects out there. So. Hopefully we've answered everything in this video and it was easy to understand for you, all right? So if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget that I'm also on Twitter at KIR Finance where you can find me tweeting, retweeting on a regular basis. Check me out there. I've also got the Patreon page if you wanna help support the channel or if you want one-on-one -on -one mentoring, I can do that as well on the Patreons. Check that out. And lastly, for a friendly reminder, this is Jesse with Keeping It Real Finance, the channel that always has your back. Tell us it like it is and I will see you on the next one. Later.